All right, let's take the Bibles out now and turn to Hebrews chapter number 3. The book of Hebrews chapter number 3 here uh, this evening. Uh, Hebrews is one of the most uh, difficult books of the New Testament to get, get right doctrinally. A great book here in the Word of God. Hebrews chapter number number 3. Uh, they still don't know for sure who wrote Hebrews. Most preachers claim they believe the Apostle Paul wrote. I, I, serious, I, d- I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, I don't know who did. But uh, anyway, uh, Jack Howe said John R. Rice wrote it. But uh, anyway, we'll look here in Hebrews chapter 3 this evening. And uh, I want to look at a verse of scripture here that I believe that I just want to give you a thought tonight. I'm, not, I'm going to be very short this evening and give you this thought. Here we go. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. That's funny with that, the contrast there. It said, live for, live for the Lord Help each other, exhort each other daily. Help each other out daily, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That little word that I, I want to look at there is today. You'll see it again in verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. Two times there, it said Today, back in chapter 4 and verse 7, again, it says, again, he lived with a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. I want to use a thought today, uh, this evening, and preach on, live for the Lord today. You live for the Lord today. All through the Bible, it's always today. The Bible never talks to you about doing stuff tomorrow. It always said do it today. Tomorrow will take care of the things itself. The Bible always teaches you do what you're supposed to do in the present. You do it right now. To, uh, many people, uh, we've been studying on Wednesday night, understanding what the will of the Lord is. I know so many people, they, they wrestle with, am I in the will of the Lord? I don't know if I'm in God's will. I don't know if I'm in the Lord's will. Is the Lord will for me to get married? Is the Lord will for me to go to college? Is the Lord will for me to buy this house? Is the Lord will for me to, they never know if they're in God's will. And I'll tell you how to be in God's will. It's simple. Uh, it's God's not playing hide and go seek with you. He's not saying, all right, I'm going to hide back here and if you can figure it out, more power to you. No, here, the way to be in the will of the Lord is you do the will of God today. You might not know what he wants you to do five years from now. You might not know what he wants you to do ten years from now. Or even five weeks from now. Or or five days from now. But you know what you're supposed to do today. If I do what I'm supposed to do today, I will be where I'm supposed to be tomorrow. It's just as simple as that. If I I do what I'm supposed to do today, you know why people are going to mess today? They didn't do what they're supposed to do yesterday. If you do what you're supposed to do today, you'll be where you ought to be tomorrow. You do what you're supposed to do tomorrow. You'll be what you're supposed to be the day after that. And on and on and on and on. Your job is to live for the Lord today. Your job ain't to figure out everything in the world. Your job is to live for God today. That's your job. That's my job. You live. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about some things here in a minute. But uh, uh, that is your, that's your, your desire. Your purpose is to want to live for God today. So what you need to ask yourself tonight is, am I living for the Lord today? That's all you got to worry about. If you're living for God today, tomorrow, the Bible says, will take care of the things that accept. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. You know, a lot of you've heard me say it many, many times. My pastor at Nebo, Paul Hollifield, was a very wise man. And he said, a lot of people let the failures of yesterday and the fears of tomorrow rob them of the joy of today. You listen to me? You'd have been saved a long time? Listen to me. You can't you let the failures of yesterday and the fears of tomorrow rob the joy of serving God today. Listen, there ain't nothing you can do about yesterday. It's done. 
It's gone. You can sit around and cry and beat yourself up and knock your head on the floor. Do whatever you want to. There ain't one thing can you can do about it. You get it confessed. Get it under the blood. You cannot let the failures of yesterday and the fears of tomorrow. You can't, you can't figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. Shout today. I can raise my hand today. I can say glory to God today, can't I? I can say, whoo, hallelujah, it's going to be saved today. I can say, I'm glad I'm not going to hell today. I'm glad I can say, I'm not. I'm going to heaven when I die today. I don't know what night tomorrow may come, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. I can say, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me today. Live for the Lord today. Live for the Lord today. Let me talk about that a little bit. I want to say, uh, divide it up like this. First, look to the Lord today. Look to Him today. Look to the Lord today. The Bible said that. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, we're living in some bad, bad times, people. I, I need not tell y'all how bad this crazy world is. Uh, he's talking about them fires in Hawaii. Well, they've already started. You've seen all the conspiracy things of all, where there was light beams coming down, fires started out and everything else. I have no idea if any of that's true or not. It might be. Uh, and it might not be. You don't know what's true and what ain't now. They got stuff nowadays that they can they can make stuff happen. That Project Blue Beam, if, you've, if you're familiar with that, is a thing where they can shoot holograms of people or whatever in the sky. And you swear up and down something hanging over your house. They can put Michael Jackson on the stage singing. And if you're there and about half drunk, You'd think it really was Michael Jackson. And you know, they'll put Elvis up there. They'll put, and, and what the scary, you know what the scary thing is? The scary thing is, is now they can take a politician and put it, and, and they have them computers duplicate their voice, and they can have them and they're cussing, cussing God or something. And you swear up now it's real. You don't know. We're living in a crazy time. There's a lot of people believe we're living in a simulation. That it ain't even real. Uh, that's right. Nothing real. And that's not true. That's not true. It is real. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to look to the Lord. You're going to have to look to the Lord. I prophesied back in December. And I told you what we'd see in 2023. And I told you about the Elon Musk and the computer my chip that they're putting in human skulls. He said they'd do it in six months. Sure enough. Sure enough, I think it was in June or July, they put the first uh, test of a hu uh, microchip inside of a human skull. What that is, they call that Neuralink, and that Neuralink that has little tiny, tiny micro uh, threads like that actually hook to different part of your brain. They figure out what part of your brain is your memory and what part of your brain is does this and what part of your brain, and they can wire it up and fix the actual connect. They say that is such a delicate surgery that a, a robot has to do it. A human can't do it. They're not, they're not steady enough. And they're putting microchips in people's heads. And I told you this was coming. We knew it was coming for years. I remember preaching back in the 70s, uh, the 80s, and through the 90s. We, I'd get up and I'd scream and holler, and I'd say, the day is going to come. I don't know if he's still got them old tapes. Uh, the day's going to come when you'll go to the grocery store and all you'll do is put your hand over like that and it'll scan and take out the money for your groceries, right? And people thought, uh, ah, I don't know about that. And we are seeing that now. It's actually being done right now. There's one food chain. I forget which one it was. Some of y'all seen that? Huh? Angles? <laughs> no, no. Some uh, it's up north somewhere where it uh, where they're where they're actually doing it. And this, so this woman, I'm trying, and she goes stuff, and she was like that, goes tick, and it's paid, and she gets a receipt. She said that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And you know, if you didn't know the Bible. That, that really sounds like a great idea. If I didn't know the Bible, I'd think, man, that's great. You don't have to worry about losing your wallet. You don't have to worry about somebody stealing your card. Just scan it, man. Uh, I, I get, you, get your groceries. Uh, pay for you. Open your car. They're already doing that. You can open your car. Lock your car. Uh, do that. You know, because of the chip that's in her hand. And put it like right here. And you know, as I know, Revelation 13 said when the beast is here, he'll have a mark in, not on, in, the right hand, or in the forehead, in, not on, in the forehead. All them old movies we used to see had, a, had a, like a, like a uh, 
barcodes, <laughs> you know, across the road. I, that's close. That was close, brother. You know, them barcodes, everything you got in your house right now, toothpaste, dog food, cereal, hot milk, I don't care what it is, got that barcode on it, and they got two down here and two in the middle and two longer. Six, six of those bars, six, six, six of those bars are longer than all that. That's been on there for 30 years. I'm telling you the things are, that we're seeing happen, we're seeing moral collapse in our world tonight like we've never seen before. I mean, it's always been bad. But I, don't, I don't believe Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing on what's going on in our world tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the child trafficking, you know, when I found out that movie they made, that Sound of Freedom, I didn't see it, but I heard a lot about it, and, and, I, and they said it was uh, exposing a lot of that stuff, and they said that Disney had a part in that movie and backed out in 2019 and said, we're not having nothing to do with this. That tells you a lot about Disney. If Disney refuses, are you listening to me tonight? I don't want to shatter your childhood dreams or nothing. I remember used to everything Disney put out, it was okay and clean, no yeller and all that kind of stuff. But brother, it ain't that way now. We're living in a different world. And a lot of people just said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, the, the, the Congress met and UFOs are coming and aliens are everywhere. And, uh, 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 and that is true. They are coming and they are all over the place. They are coming. The, the, the question is not, are UFOs real? That ain't the question. They've known they've been real for 75 years. The question is, what are they and where are they coming from and what they're doing here? And they ain't coming from Alpha Centauri. That's 100 million light years away. You think they'd fly 100 million light years and then get here and crash? I don't think so. I mean, if they're that dumb, I know stupid little E.T., he didn't have a lot of sense. He was walking around like this, like a bug-eyed maggot, and, and walking around like that, like, E.T. phone hook. I guess, you know, I couldn't stand that. I never did. All that. And then, but that's that's a hybrid. That's one of them things they make. That's a creature of demonic made in underground bases. True. It's true. I mean, the truth's coming out, y'all. It's coming out. And we don't know what's getting ready to happen on this earth. I'm telling you what the book says. That old book still says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I don't know about you, but I'm going to look to the Lord, brother. I'm going to look to the Lord today. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know what all we're going to face, but I know who's going to be there with us to face it all. He didn't, get, somebody say that here this morning, one of them songs or something. He didn't, he didn't get us this far and then not going to take us the rest of the way. He didn't bring us to here to leave us and not take us the rest of the way. We need to look to the Lord uh, today. Uh, when, I, when I was going to school, if a kid would have came to school and said, I'm a cat, meow. You, honest to goodness, you'd have had to go to a, a rubber room. You'd have been putting nut. I don't mean that bad. I'm not trying to be ugly enough. Now, the teacher will put a lit kitty litter I'm in a box in the class, and they can say meow, and I, and and you you have to pretend with them, or you're the mean person. Yeah, everything turned around backwards. Rights become wrong. Wrongs become right. Men have become very feminine. Women are becoming very masculine. Lord, somebody asked me that one day. They said, uh, uh, Brother Danny, they said, he said, what do you think about a man bun? I said, what's a man, a man bun? They said, yeah, it's a man. He has, has a pony. I said, I don't, I don't know. I, it sort of would sound like a girl with a mustache. Same thing, I guess. A, a girl tash. Man bun, girl tash. So, same thing. But uh, there's, a, there's a strong, <laughs> there's a, you can laugh. We still got a little bit of freedom left. They're getting us on YouTube. I mean, you know that. They told Hensley, my buddy, that puts all our stuff on YouTube. He said, Brother Danny, he tried to expand it and everything. And they, YouTube wrote him a letter and said, Nope, uh, your, your, your channel, which is us, uh, don't meet our standards for community standards and respect and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of other preachers who believe the same thing we do that get to do it all the time. It hurts my feelings. But mine's got an edge to it, you know. Mine's got an edge to it. And I know that that's the Lord. Give me that. That's my job. And mine's got an edge to it. My job, you know what my job is? To open your eyes. That's my job. That's my calling. My, what my calling is, you say, oh, I never thought of that. 
I never thought that. That's my calling. So if that happens while I'm preaching, I'm fulfilling my calling. And I'm telling you, brother, listen to me. Listen, we are, you know, in China, they have what they call a credit score. And James Harden, the ball player, is celebrating China. LeBron James, the ball player, celebrating China. Oh, how wonderful. James Harden made some booze and sold 10,000 10, bottles in 10 seconds the other day. And all Chinese. And I reckon he does love them. And he said, those Chinese people are so friendly. People are mean here in America. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, you go over there and live a while and look at the slavery and look at, uh, they, look at the way they treat people and tell me China's a good thing. And they, they have a credit score. Now, a credit score is you are, you are watched, you are kept up with, and if you do things that are against the, quote, established government, you, you lose points on your credit score which means you can't go certain places you can't buy, buy certain things your spending is limited and your money is limited and there is a strong move to have that same thing here in our country you better believe it there's people working day and night to make why do you think our president and all them are so crazy over china and china's so wonderful after they sent up the wuhan flu and TikTok. And fentanyl. What a blessing. Boy, ain't they been a help to us. I, I destroyed our country. Lord have mercy. I, I listen, I, I, I about feel like preaching here tonight now. And I, you, you better hear me this evening, brother. We're in trouble. And I'm going to look to the Lord. I don't know about you. Better learn how to look to the Lord. See, God, the Lord's going to have it fixed where eventually you're going to have to look to Him. Look to the Lord today. Look to the Lord today. He's the author. And finisher of our faith. We say secondly this evening. Lean on the Lord today. Lean upon the Lord. You know. Uh, lean on the Lord. That means I'll have to learn how to lean on him. To take care of me. And supply my needs. And watch over my family. And, and hear my prayer. Lean on him. Not like they said. There's two drunks going. You're saying about them two drunks going around. And they're both leaning on each other. <laughs> and one of them. They both fell down. You know. That ain't the way it is. We lean on him. We lean on the Lord. I've got to think about school starting back. I got to think about all you mamas when you send them little kids off to school. Oh Lord, even Christian schools. Uh, the devil's got he's everywhere. He not not near as bad, of course. Public schools gone, buddy. They gone to the devil. And and uh, Christian schools, the devil gets in them sometimes too. And you send them little kids off to school, and you think, oh God. Oh, God, what am I going to do? I go with my babies to school, and they look so little. It's hard for you to believe. They still look this big to you. It's hard, it's hard for you to believe. You're still calling their baby your baby when he's 17, 18, you know. Uh, but he's, he's actually growing up, and she's actually getting bigger. And you say, I don't want him to go. I don't want him to go. I don't want him to go. i tell you what you need to do, sister. Tell you what you need to do, sir. Take that. They're going to school. You get home. God give you a little time. You get in that prayer closet. You put your Bible down like that. You say, God, build a hedge around my babies. God, take care of them. God, don't let nothing happen to them. And you pray a wall of prayer. Lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. Take care of your kids. Lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. You can trust Him. Ask God to take them. When they'll wind up going to the army or moving away or going to college or something. And it's hard to do it. Learn how to lean on the Lord today. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, someone at one time, uh, uh, a man, man come in one time, Martin Luther said, this guy came in, well, and she's dressed in, in black, and uh, said, uh, they said, God is dead. And they said, God's dead. And they said, he said, it, it's just as wrong for her to say God's dead as for you to act like he is. A lot of Christians, we won't say God's dead, but we act like he is. Amen. We worry ourselves to in a frazzle, chew our fingernails off, and get have, have, have to have stomach, our stomach turns flips, and everything else. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to pay the bills? Things are getting hot. It sure is. I mean, it's about my taxes this morning. Lord have mercy. I got mad as fire about that. My taxes went up like crazy, man. This year I said, what? My house worth that much more than it was this time last year. And, and you know, everything you get jumps up. Every time you get a bill jumps up. Every time you go to the store, jumps up. I mean, you you buy you buy. Uh, I was gonna tell you about that restaurant. Them boys took Dax too. That's that's crazy. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. They took him to a restaurant. Some of our steak was three hundred dollars in a restaurant. Chop it. I said Dax. He said I didn't pay for it. 
I didn't matter. I said, you better not. You better not. Don't, don't be dumb enough. Listen, they ain't a, they ain't a whole cow worth $300. I mean, <laughs> it's all ground up and beef or something like that, maybe and everything. But everywhere you go, I mean, brother, you go to McDonald's, $10, $11. I mean, you, you fill up your car. It's sixty and seventy-five dollars. I mean, your ta- your taxes, your your payments, the in the uh, what's call it the interest rate uh, are going like since last twenty years uh, is high. It's going up. You say, brother Danny, what are we going to do? Lean on him. Lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. Amen. Lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. Amen. You know what he's singing a song about? Till the storm passes by. That reminds me of the great Dr. John Rawlins, the Landmark Baptist Temple up in Cincinnati, Ohio. I used to listen to the radio program every Sunday night after church. That was all the, re- all the preaching we could hear back then on the radio. And it was on 105.3, Gaffney, South Carolina. And they'd come on there and they'd say, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Lord, in mercy, there have been times I about shouted. There have been times when I didn't know, good night, y'all. I've laid, I've laid in my bed before and I thought, oh, God. Oh, God, I ain't going to make it. God, what in the world am I going to do? And turn that radio on, Gaffney, and Peg McCamey come on and said, life is easy when you're up on the mountain and things, you know, when things go wrong. And, but, but then things change. And you're down in the valley. And then she'd sing the God of the mountain. And she'd start laughing. And I'd start saying, glory to God. Amen. I am going to make it. God is still on the throne. Heaven is still sweet. Hey, hey, we're still saved tonight. Learn to lean on the Lord today. You can't figure it out. Stormy weather reminds us that we're really not in charge of anything. You know what you can do about a thunderstorm? Nothing. Get out of the way. And you can't keep your heart beating. You say, my heart's going to stop and I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's right. You're right. And you can stay up all night and it ain't going to make it no better. You go to sleep and you say, Lord, you're keeping my heart beating. If it ain't beating, I I ain't going to wake up. So you're the one keeping my heart beating and you can't do nothing about it. So if he, if you can't even make your heart beat, if you can't even make your lungs work and your eyes see, you can't do nothing about the other stuff. The world's headed for a one world government, people. Just as sure as you're sitting in your seat tonight, all it's going to take, I don't know how things are going to play out, but i tell you what I think. I think. I, I don't know how right this is, but I think something big is going to happen. Not, an, not another pandemic. It always comes from the way you ain't looking for it. Like 9-11, but it that hit us from left field. And then we got all that, oh, that, here come the pandemic, left field. And everybody's saying, there's another one coming, there's another one coming. Uh-uh. It'll be something else. It'll be something else. I don't know what, but it's something you don't think about. And bam, we're going to get hit again and throw the world into a tizzy. And I don't know if it's going to be the rapture. I hope it is. Uh, but that would be the greatest thing. But there's going to be something happen that disrupts everything. You know, the AI is progressing so fast now, artificial intelligence, that there's, you know, seriously, serious people are saying that in the near future, we won't have to have elections no more. You won't need it. All the AI has all the information, and they're going to figure out who's best for the job and just do it. Well, guess who gave them their information? <laughs> I mean, duh. It wasn't us. They never called me and asked me my opinion about what AI should think and how it should handle problems. Lord, we're sunk then. The truth is, we're probably already sunk. The last one was crooked. That makes me a conspiracy theorist. So be it. Think whatever you want to. Now, you don't come up with a hundred million votes in the middle of the night. I mean, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, we went to bed here and we thought everything's all right about 11.30. Woke up the next morning and said, what in the world are going to happen? There's trucks running everywhere and numbers piling up here and numbers being pushed and all that. Oh, Brother Danny, you're certainly not, you don't believe our government. Come on, people. You don't believe the government would, would deceive us, do you? 
I don't believe they're capable of telling the truth. Amen. Amen. Hey, you better learn how to lean on the Lord, brother. One world government's coming. One world monetary system coming. There's a thing out right now that says the U.S. dollar is falling like crazy in, in the world. Uh, that means it will no longer be the standard amount of money. And they're saying if you got money stashed somewhere, you better do something with it. Uh, I don't know what. If you got in the bank, they can they can take it. If you got cash, they can devalue it. So they say it's not worth that much anymore. If you buy gold, what are you gonna do with gold? Eat it? You can't. I mean, eventually, eventually they got you. We're ready for a one world government, a one world monetary system, and a one world dictator, and a one world religion. Just as fast as this thing can go. The Pope. And all the religious leaders of the world have met and are meeting and saying, we need to figure out some way to have one world religion that everybody can come together and agree on. And guess who's in charge? <laughs> Him. <laughs> Somebody's in charge. You can bet that. You can count on that. Now, the Catholic Church is a chameleon. The Catholic Church can blend wherever it's at. Don't when somebody says, Oh, the Catholic Church has changed now. No, they just blend in. I'm not talking about Catholic people. There's a lot of good Catholic people that are saved. But I'm talking about the hierarchy. The, the, the Roman Catholic Church is a chameleon. In Haiti, I've been there. In Haiti, the the national religion is Catholicism and Voodoo. How does Catholicism and Voodoo merge? They merge with wherever they're at to keep the people in the church. You better learn how to lean on the Lord, buddy. You better learn how to lean on the Lord. We had kids that couldn't come to our church this morning because the parents wouldn't let them. The Catholic Church didn't want them coming back here. Amen? Ain't that some of yours? Kelly had kids. And, and there was, they said, well, the Catholic Church don't want them coming back to our church. Wonder why? We're nice. We give them pizza. But we give them a truth, too. Amen? Let me say quickly, now, I said I was going to be short. I'll tell you, it never fails, does it? Y'all must need it bad. Third, third, we're to love like the Lord loves. Today. Now, the Bible said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That means there's so much sin everywhere that people's love, people get hard-hearted. And, and, and they don't love each other no more. You know what? When a church is right with God, and I'm saying this to you shining light people, when we're right with the Lord, we all love each other. We don't agree. We might see things different, but we'll love each other. And you know you're getting backslid when you walk in here this day. Oh, God. Oh, there she is. I don't like him. I don't like him. Nobody better not say nothing to me. You need to trip the altar, buddy. Ask God to soften your heart, ma'am. Amen. Brother, you, you love like the Lord loved today. Love like the Lord today. People, we got, we got to stick together. Us Christians got to stick together. We can't fight each other. We can't get in here and fight each other. I, I, this morning, I know bus kids are crazy, you know, and everything. I understand that. I understand that. Wait, we're in a war. Wait, you, you think it's going? You're just going to come in and we're going to brag on you for an hour and you go home? This is a war. We're fighting a battle. We are fighting a battle over our kids' souls. Listen, it's war. Bloodshed's in war. There's there's wounds in in war. Uh, listen, people. We, we're in a war. We've got to realize we're, we're, the enemy ain't your brother or sister sitting across from you. The enemy's the devil. Love the Lord like the Lord loves today. Amen. So the man over there one time is painting. He's an artist. And painting a picture of a, a poor woman in Uganda. Oh, that, and and starving and painting a painting and a preacher come up and said man there's a there's a lot of them like that they're really living like that and he got under conviction he threw his brush down he said instead of painting the heathen i'm gonna go reach them and went to the mission field that's what the lord do that's what the lord would do instead of driving around and say look these sorry good nothing drug addicts won't they clean that mess up over there you know what the lord do he'd go over there and try to help them and try to reach them that's why we go visit on saturday I really appreciate all of y'all coming out 
last Saturday when we sang, really, that was great. We had 70 people, but I figured out y'all all don't really work on Saturday. You had me believing it's all worked. I guess that's how naive a preacher can be sometimes. I was trying to tell myself they had to work. <laughs> and it's not true. Every head bowed and every eye shut. Please. Lord, I've never seen such pitiful. They all look like I just slapped you with a wet rag. I don't mean nothing bad by that, but, you know, instead of painting the heathen, brother, let's go get them. Amen. And then last thing I want to say is look for the Lord today. The Bible said looking for, looking for that blessed hope. Now I know they watch me online every week. They say, Brother Danny, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. You're wrong about that rapture. You're wrong about that rapture. Well, you, you might ought to just a bit, sir. You might not know what you're talking about. I don't claim to know everything about the future. I'm asking the Lord to show me. And when he shows me, I'm going to tell you all if he does. I'm asking him to show me exactly how things are going to unfold in the future. And if he does, I'll tell you. But right now, I ain't, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I ain't kidding you. I'm getting it. The Lord giving me some stuff. And if there was no possibility of Jesus coming back, why does the Bible say over, over, and over, looking for that blessed hope? Why does it say? Tell me why it says we look for, our, for his son from heaven. And God raised him from the dead. Looking for Jesus. Looking for him. Looking for him. There is not one scripture that would have to be fulfilled that would prevent him from taking us out of here this evening. Look for him today. Remember the story of Corey Tim Boone. I'll tell you this I'm through. You know, it's a great story. If you've never read that book or seen that video that the hiding place, you ought to get it. You ought to get it. I'm telling you, one of I'm telling you, it made an impression on my life like very few stories. Tremendous, tremendous story. Her, her family hid Jews in Holland when Germany, when the Germans came and took over Holland and they were persecuted and threw them in jail. And her and her sister Betsy went to a concentration camp. Really, you really ought to see that. I guess the movie they made out of it 30 years ago. It's tremendous. She used to go around and give her testimony at Billy Graham Crusades and places. And they said one night, Corey said one night, that the German planes were flying over their house and they could hear bombs, you know, <laughs> try to sleep like that. Boy, you a thunderstorm, you know, other than when it did. I woke up and listened to the thunder for a while. What if that's bombs falling around town? And she laying there and she said, I couldn't sleep. And I couldn't sleep and it's pitch dark and every once in a while I just died up. Like, boom! Or a bomb went off across town. She said, I heard something downstairs. And I thought, it's Betsy. It's Betsy. So she said, I got out of bed and I walked downstairs, and there was my sister Betsy fixing tea. She said, what is it? She said, I couldn't sleep. She said, I can't either. She said, those bombs are just, it's, I can't stand the thoughts of what's going on. And, and so they sat down there and talked for a little bit and had tea. And a little bit, the bombs died down. It looks like it's done for the night. And it sort of got quiet. And she said, Betsy, I believe I'll go up and try to get some sleep. She said she went up to get in her bed, and it was dark. And they didn't have, you know, light street lights and everything. And she went to reach where her pillow was and something cut her hand. And she said it cut it and she pulled it out and it was a piece of steel metal that long scrapnel of one of them bombs that blowed through there, went through that window and hit her right there in that pillow. And she said it cut my hand. And I looked back and I thought, oh Betsy, if I hadn't have come down there and checked on you, that would have went right through my head. And Betsy said, Corey, there are no ifs in God's will. There ain't no, wow, this, uh, listen, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, y'all. If you'll get right with God and serve Him, you might have some hard times, but you have absolutely nothing to fear. And just like God, it's always coincidence. Stuff like that happened to them over and over and over in that story. Lord protect them. I got to thinking one day, wonder how many times the Lord's protected us that we didn't even know about. Ain't no telling. We get to have, I'll, I'll probably say, the devil had this plan for you, Danny. The devil had that plan. And I stepped in, and I said, I sure do appreciate that, Lord. I was too stupid to even realize that you was keeping him off of me like that. Glory to God. Learn to live for the Lord.
and look for the Lord today. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Miss Desi's coming right quickly. Play softly. I don't know what you've been worrying about. I don't know what you've been fretting about. I don't know if the signs of the times got you spoofed and you're scared and worried or you're worried about your marriage or worried about your kids or maybe worried about a doctor's report you got coming up. But maybe you need to just come and say, Lord, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Maybe you need to just crowd around this all. Come on, right now. Come on, let's, let's get up here tonight and say, Lord, help me to quit trying to figure everything out and question everything and help me to just lean upon you today and learn to trust you today. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on, y'all. Come on, teenagers. Come on, mamas and daddies. Amen. Lord, help me to just learn to lean upon you today. Amen. 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 God help us tonight. God help us tonight. Christians pray. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Danny, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck. I, I stay tore up all the time. You get up there and talk about all that stuff that just scares me to death for my kid. Learn to lean on the Lord, people. Learn to le- love the Lord. Learn to lean upon Him. Learn to live for Him. Learn to look for Him today. Heavenly Father, I come before you this evening thanking you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds. Lord, we don't I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day. We may be in Asheville in the emergency room with a family member. We may be in Charlotte in ICU. We may be driving down the road having a good time rejoicing and shouting the victory. I don't know. But Lord, help me to live for you today. Help me to live for you today. Then I'll be all right tomorrow. Help me learn to do that, Lord, as it is called today. 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 Help us live for you today. Have you way in our hearts. God, do what ought to be done in every life. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray. Bless every single person here tonight. Bless those that are struggling. Bless those that are, that are fighting battles. Bless those that are having financial troubles. God, give them the, the money they need to pay their bills and get their car fixed or get their, uh, get their uh, house fixed or get their uh, water bill caught up or their electric bill. God, God, help them, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd help that marriage. Lord, help them just to stop, hit the reset button and start all over and love each other and do right. God, I pray for all these kids going back to school. Please, please, Lord. Lord, protect them, God. Build a hedge around them. Don't let them get into some filthy wickedness and sin, Lord. Protect their minds. Help them to remember what they've learned here, what they've learned at home. Stay true to what's right. Help us, oh God, to do it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. People still praying tonight? People still praying? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I know not what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All hearts are clear. Amen. If it matters to you, it matters to him. Right. All right. Now, a um, couple things right quick. Be here Wednesday night. Bring your Bible. You're going to need it. Uh, we're going to talk about Christian music. Uh, it's right in our study in Ephesians. Uh, speak to yourselves in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing with melody heart to the Lord, not to a crowd. Sing it to the Lord. If a crowd's there, fine, but you learn to sing to the Lord. Amen. And uh, that'll be Wednesday night. And then we're going to uh, visit Saturday morning and to sing Saturday night. I hope everybody's planning on going with us Saturday night. Uh, don't say, oh, my goodness, it's hot. and like, you'll, you'll, you'll be missing this hot weather in a few weeks. So come on and go with us. And we are planning on going to Rockingham. On Friday night, September 29th, like we did last year. Remember when it comes to the hurricane? Uh, 
uh, that'll be on Friday night, the 29th of September. I'll be preaching revival Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and that'll be before then. I gotta go up to Maryland and preach at the Smokies, and then uh, down at remember Brother Ronnie uh, Church down in uh, in Bessemer City, uh, the little purple church, purple seats. Everybody, uh, we had such a good service down there last year. That'll be uh, in just a few weeks, and a lot of good meetings coming up, and camp meeting October. 18, okay? Amen. Mm. Oh my goodness, bless her heart. Yeah. Bless her heart. Amen. Let's remember her in prayer tonight. A uh, lot of other people need prayer. And, and uh, when you pray, remember people like her. And she still got a little boy on her route that begs to come to church every Sunday. And his daddy won't let him. Just mean, wicked man. Won't let him come. And he's standing there looking out the window. About that high. All that bus goes off and comes to church. Maybe maybe one of you men. Somebody would feel led. Maybe go talk to that man. Or witness to him Saturday. Might make the difference in that. I won't say his name. But uh, it's a bad situation. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Bless her heart. Amen. All righty. We got a lot to pray about. Amen. Now, um, uh, I want to meet with the boys. We're going to talk tonight about getting some work done around here. We've got a lot of work to do before the camp meeting. It be sure would be nice if one of you guys got a weed eater with a blade coming out. It looks awful. The weeds are coming up really bad around here to help us out with that. I mean, they're going seven days a week. And we've got jobs to do. And they've got jobs to do. I've got enough stuff at my house for them to do. Uh, but we ain't going to be able to get it done. So if any of you men would want, would do that, bring a weed eater with a blade, that sure would be nice. Let me know. And we need some beds. If anybody's got some beds, uh, we're going to put in the two houses there for people to stay at the camp meeting. Uh, uh, or or, or a good deal of mattresses. I know... Uh, one man told me one time, he said, hey, I, that, I never would sleep on a mattress that was used. And I said, well, you ever stay in a motel? You weirdo. You don't have a pervert in the country slept on them. And you're worried because one per person slept on it? That says how stupid people are. You shoot, you shoot it with Clorox. <laughs> Clorox kill anything. You shoot it with Clorox, you'll be all right. Might not smell too good, but you lay it out in the sun a day or two. All right. If anybody's got some mattresses you ain't using, uh, we, we used our mattresses last year, but it would be nice. We had just some real, we'll just stack them up, you know, on the floor. And let me know. All right. All hearts clear? All right. Amen. Okay. Let's let's be dismissed. Word of prayers, fellowship. Be friendly in the Lord uh, before you go. Uh, uh, Leon, we're glad to have you on this young man all the way from up north in Florida with us tonight. So y'all be sure to make him welcome too, okay? Go ahead, Brother Steve.